Welcome everyone. This is Frank DeMora coming to you with the YouTube channel, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. I'd like to invite you to go to my prophecy site, BibleProphecyMan.com, where you see a lot more than just the YouTube videos there. And of course, this is where I connect the dots between what the Lord showed us in the Bible about the last days, and I've put all the documents to show you that these things that he warned about are actually coming to place in our generation and uh, you can get this information today by clicking to this link. Now, right in the Revelation, Jesus showed us in the last days that there was going to be one person, a man, that would be called the beast, the antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. There's many names for him. But this man was going to be able to control the economy of the world. And how is he going to do that? Well, obviously, the Lord showed us. And uh, he gave this information to the youngest apostle, Apostle John, and this approximately was in 96 A.D. And so, just think about this. The information that we got almost 2,000 years ago about what was going to happen in the future, we're seeing it happen right now. One of the reasons why we're seeing it is because Daniel 12.4 tells us that this generation would be known as the generation who increase in knowledge. And our generation, because of the birth of the computers, has definitely fulfilled uh, that prophecy as well. And you're going to see how it's also this generation who has the increased knowledge is going to fulfill Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 14, and also Revelation chapter 20, of these, these specific verses in those chapters. So let's see what Jesus Christ told us. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich or poor, free and bound, to receive a mark in, in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who hath understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His uh, number is six. Six, six. So there's a few things I want to show you uh, that are important in this scripture. Number one, it's not going to matter what kind of stature you have during this period of time where the Antichrist is going to control the economy, whether you're small or great. In other words, what class that you're in. It's not going to matter if you're the wealthiest person in the world or you can be the poorest person in the world. It's going to affect you. Or if you're free, in other words, if you're not in jail, because the scripture says free and bond. So, I mean, we have obviously jails all over the world. And uh, when this happens, when the Antichrist forces this mark, if you're in jail, obviously you're not going to be able uh, to run from it. So you're going to be faced right away with the decision, shall I take this mark and live? Which means that if you did, you go to hell. Or should I refuse it? Now, we see what's going to happen to those people who refuse the mark. And uh, let me get into that. So we're going to move down in that direction. But here, first of all, I want to let everybody know that the Lord is going to let everybody know before uh, he's going to give a warning, do not take this. So the people who ask me, well, what about the people in the far remotes of the jungles, wherever they may be? They're not, they're not going to understand what's going on, and they may take it. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible shows us that before this issuance by the Antichrist, there's the Lord in his merciful judgment will be sending an angel to tell everyone on the face of the earth not to take that. Listen to what it says. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive the mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out within mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. In other words, in the presence of Jesus Christ. And the smoke of their torment ascended up, get this, forever and ever. And they had no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So, there you go, the angels flying around telling you exactly what, what this is all about. Do not take it, because if you take it, you're going to end up going to hell. Now, 
If you do not listen to this message now and you refuse to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're going to be left in the tribulation. You will be facing the Antichrist. You will be facing the system that the Antichrist will be developing or enforcing the one that Jesus Christ warned about in all of these scriptures. And, but, so, for example, if you hear this message today and you refuse it, and then the rapture of the church takes place, you will know what's going to happen to you. Then you're going to be confronted with a decision. And what's that decision? Let's find out right here. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and for and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received a mark, upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years so this is what's happened in this scripture this is what it's showing us during the tribulation many are going to remember what we witnessed to them about these coming events and they're going to say no I'm not going to take this uh, mark and they will become the new Christians the new saints during the tribulation because the, the saints now on earth were going to be transported into heaven at the rapture. There's going to be more saints that will come after the church. And these are the people who will give their life. They'll be martyrs for Christ, as we see right here. And the Lord tells us beforehand how these people will die. They are going to be hunted down, obviously, and they are going to be beheaded. So, not a very good picture of a future if you're stuck in the tribulation. But at least the Lord in his kindness and his mercy has given you one last shot at making it into heaven. But obviously, you will have to become a martyr for Christ at that point. So, I've been showing the people uh, updates on how we're going to a cashless society. i got tons of documents in my book. But this is some of the newer information that I wanted to pass on to you. So let's go right to that now. You'll see this particular article as soon as it comes up here. Uh, this was February 10th, 2012. Less Cash Society Living Without Cash. Just imagine how nice we could be, we could travel anywhere without the need to carry cash. Even without the need to carry a wallet and simply bring your phone, we can do anything in any transaction. The good news, lifestyle or often called a cashless society, is predicted to be booming next year. And I have 100% confidence in this in this predicament because we know that the last day signs will be moving along just like a woman with birth pangs. We know that from Mark 13.8. And so we'll see more advances of this cashless society coming. It says, less cash society involves thanks um, to e-money. Bank of International Settlement defines e-money as a product of stored value or prepaid within a value of money, monetary value, stored electronically in an electronic equipment owned by someone. In contrast to credit cards, debit and other payment cards, e-money transactions do not require the author authorization process and is not associated with a bank account because its value has been stored in the means to pay pay it. All right, e-money is generally used for small uh, value transactions. There are two types of e-money uh, is in the form of cards which are usually issued by a bank and the electronic form which are usually issued by a mobile operator. So there you have it. That's just another example, if you will, of the the technology that's coming out driving us to finish the scriptures that we read about in Revelation concerning the mark of the beast or the coming mark of the beast. Now there is another article that I want to share with you why cash losing its currency. Let's go to this one because there is a video on this and uh, you'll see it here March 25th 2012 this is very current uh, and it has, like I said, a video. Now, it may sound a little pingy, 
here, but you can do your own Google search. Just put the headline right here, and uh, you'll be able to watch this without the pingy. But I think it'll be okay, so let's play it. I don't know what happened to the video, but I'm still going to play it so you can hear it. And you'll be able to actually watch it once you go uh, to the site and uh, download it for yourself. Knock against cash is that it's costly. It's really expensive to move it, store it. Well, let me just try something for you here. There you go. I think we can put it in the grave already. Author David Bowman, in his new book, The End of Money, argues the biggest knock against cash is that it's costly. It's really expensive to move it, store it, secure it, inspect it, shred it, redesign it, resupply it, and around and around we go. It already cost the U.S. government almost twice as much to make a penny and a nickel as they're actually worth. But that's only one cause. Cash, Woolman says, is also the currency of crime, bankrupt, drug deals, bribes, and... There's something else. It's just not particularly clean. It's gross. I'm with you. I'm right there with you. It's uh, it's pretty gross. The filth factor alone, he says, should make cash a no-no in food establishments, like his neighborhood ice cream shop, Salt and Straw, in Portland, Oregon. So that is one paint to eight dollars. Okay. Owner Kim Malik isn't about to turn cash down, not yet anyway. But she is happier when people pay with their smartphones instead. She's using a new app called Card Case, essentially a digital wallet. Let's say you wanted to get a haircut, and the barbershop, like this one, takes Card Case. All you do is register, and you create a virtual tab right on your phone. So when it comes time to pay, you will find your wallet or your credit card. You don't even have to pull out the phone. Instead, a photo pops up on the register, and the money is seamlessly deducted from an account of your choosing. It's going to recognize you before we even walk in. Jared Fleisler uses Card Case time. He works for the company that invented Swear, named for the other nifty gadget it came up with, that allows anyone to swipe a credit card into their smartphone or iPad. All this easy money you know, flying through the cloud has some a little weary about security. It's actually an added layer of security. So every transaction has your photo right next to your name. So if somebody else walks up, you're going to know instantly as a merchant that that's not the person who owns that phone or has that card case. And it's not just Square. Everyone from Apple to Google to Visa and most major banks are looking to change the way we pay. And the number of mobile money transactions is going through the roof. They went from $140 million that would be processed in 2009 to $750 million in 2010 to $4 billion in 2011. And we expect that we'll see $7 billion this year. Sam Schrager is with PayPal, one of the pioneers in e-money way back when checks were still commonly used. Anyone who has a wallet can use a digital wallet more easily than they can use a physical wallet. PayPal believes that digital wallets is the future of shopping. No cash, just a mobile device with an app that combines all your credit and checking accounts along with coupons and other offers. I think money can be better in a digital in a digital world. It, it can move more easily. It can be more flexible. It can actually be smarter. Lost it all 
all this, of course, are the poor, with no access to smartphones or fancy tablets. And there are those who depend on cash. Waiters, parking valets, sky caps, and babysitters, none of whom is anxious to see cash. Thank you very much. Disappear. Can we lose a little of the nostalgia of having a actual money in our wallet and coins in our pockets? Uh, we do lose something when it's all digital. Uh, it's a uh, it's loss of a lot of icons, a lot of symbols about who we are, how we're doing, and what we value things for. Can you just put on Jared? But that mobile money train has already left the station. Most agree cashless is not only inevitable, for most of us, it's already here. So what are the chances now that it won't happen? What, what, what are the chances that we will not see a cashless society? Well, I'll, let me tell you, I hate to break, you know, the, be a bad bear of uh, bad news, but knowing what the Lord told us and knowing where we are going right now, I can assure you 100% that before it's all over, this world will be dealing with a cashless society and just as the Lord said who is going to be using this cashless or enforcing it would be the Antichrist. Now in my book I give you a lot of scenarios how this can come about uh, fairly quickly but just breaking it down in a nutshell uh, if you see that there's terrorist attacks or major war where there's uh, problems it could even be a civil war among the different nations where they call martial law they could immediately establish a new way of doing business by chips in the hand where you wouldn't be able to do anything unless you had these chips that came out so it could be anything it could even be a natural disaster that could call martial law in many states like we've been seeing in many of the different countries after major storms where they call martial law well if it was a prolonged problem we may see the the issuance of these uh, chips right away and of course we know when that's going to happen it'll happen during the tribulation with the Antichrist now let me show you a little bit more because we have gone as I'm going to show you here they mentioned going from the checkbooks to the credit cards to the smart cards with chips in them to the e-money and now as just as the Lord showed us that they were going to mark you in your hand or in your forehead and, uh, and obviously it shows us that you'll be able to buy or sell with something in your hand well let's take a look because we're at that point right now where the technology has brought us right to where Jesus said and the only thing that hasn't come yet is the physical appearance of the Antichrist who's actually enforcing it yet but look look what is going on look what is going on in the world today with the chips in the hand that will actually deduct from your uh, accounts your bank accounts so you never have to touch money but some citizens are embracing the age of big brother in rotterdam holland Nightclub owner John Van Gallen has introduced a system of microchipping for his VIP patrons. It's almost like barcode people. Yeah, it is. Because every chip got a number, and the number corresponds to the name and the picture. That's the way it is, yeah. It is. The microchip has to be surgically inserted under the skin, which means Thank you. Big Brother is here to stay. 
All right, so uh, there's just a few things that I'd like to remind you in here that he's talking about uh, being the first one to get it. Uh, and many people ask me and have been writing me about if they take the chip now, are they going to hell? Now, we know from Scripture exactly when this is going to take place. It's going to take place during the tribulation. The Antichrist is going to enforce this mark. So up until the time that he enforces the mark, whatever they're doing right here, like this gentleman took this chip, it is not the mark of the beast. It is a forerunner, could be, to the mark of the beast. But it isn't issued and it's not mandated by the man for the form of worship and uh, to be able to buy or sell in the Antichrist economy. So uh, to answer the questions that I've been getting, no, this isn't today the mark of the beast, but it is, in fact, the road leading to that uh, mark that will be given in the last days. Now, we went from the arms, and if you know what I know, man, I, you see this information. You just see, how could the people not believe in the word of the Lord? And so I'm going to show you now, this is a very quick video, how they actually put this in the hand now. Remember, we went from the checkbooks to the credit cards to the smart cards to the e-money. Uh, and now we have the chip in the hand that can actually deduct right out of your account, as we saw right here. So the technology that John had seen uh, or was privy to for the last days, we're seeing the technology right before us. And again, it was only supposed to happen. It was supposed to be revealed to one specific generation. That's the generation who increased in knowledge. That is us. Let's watch the video. And there it is. Just a little syringe. And it only takes about 12 or 13 seconds to do it. And that's it. It's in. That's it. So we're looking at a product of what John may have seen in 96 AD, approximately 96 AD. But whether he actually saw this technology, I can't tell you because there's a lot of different technologies, and you'll see that in my book, that will able to do the same thing to deduct from your checking account. And so that is it. This We are here already. And the only thing that I believe that hasn't happened yet is a major problem within the global economy that forces a new brand new system that the Antichrist will eventually uh, monitor and run. And the way things are going with the global community as far as the economy goes, I would say that we're well on the road. We're in a raging river in the canoe heading right down to Revelation 6.6, 6, or excuse me, Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 17, with the warning about the mark of the beast. And so, as the Lord, as the Holy Spirit tells you, here is wisdom. The Lord has given you wisdom about these things of the last days. Please listen to the Lord. And it's on your head if you refuse the, this instruction from Jesus Christ through his word. And I pray that today, Good Friday, where the Lord hung on that cross for your sins and my sins, I pray that today would be the first day that you release those sins as you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and begin to walk with your Lord today. What a day to give your life over to the Lord on the day that he hung on the cross. Please, don't waste any time. Do it today.